that would be perfect for it. What, speaking of um, Tulsa, why did you do the record on a, in a mobile studio? Nobody live? else would have us. Well, you already had the record deal. I mean, why, why not go to a big old company studio? I, I just, you just want to get the live, that live, is that what the feel you were going for, the live feel? Yeah, we wanted, we wanted to end up with a uh, raw live album, and we and wanted... We, to we all got a rash from it. <laughs> <laughs> Real raw. <laughs> <laughs> and we also wanted to um, get out of L.A. at that point and, you know, kind of go out by ourselves and not be bothered. So um, the record company did research on a bunch of different um, mobile locations across the country. And um, when we found out about Kane's Ballroom and all the history behind it, it had to be the choice. So, Great. Um, Warner is a huge label. You think that um, uh, with a strong rock roster, as a new band, you think that's helped you or hurt you? Are you reading this? Y yeah, can you tell? <laughs> Family, obviously, that's why I'm off camera right now. <laughs> um, I think, are you, were you going to say something? Yeah. I, th I think Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers, uh, we had a lot of labels that were interested, and I think of all the labels, Warner Brothers had the most um, capability of understanding what life, sex, and death is and can be. Um, so the fact that they're pretty big, um, it makes it that much more of a challenge for us to prove ourselves there, but n nobody can make it happen the way they can, you know. Right. You guys, you guys have done some pretty controversial material. How do you, how do you feel that? that we, you, that's the thing. We don't think we're controversial. This is just how we are, and it's 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 society that thinks we're controversial. I mean, everybody behaves naturally in their real lives and that's how our music is and um, we've learned so far that men who sit in boardrooms make decisions about what women think is sexist and that you can't swear and that you can't question authority and that you can't question an antiquated school system and you know it's kind of frustrating but we're you know we're we're in this to to, to make our music we're not in this to be product how did um what do you guys think about the way that warner handled the the cop killer thing with ice tea um, I have no opinion at this time. Yeah. Uh, Stanley? I think Ice-T, Ice he's got a right to say what he'd like to say. I mean, I, I, I met the cat about four years ago, and I was just hanging out on Sunset there, you know, and playing some harmonica. And uh, I started singing this song, you know, as he came by and he had all these other cats with him, you know, this one car and then another car and then another car, and they're all going to uh, maybe a, a music store. I think it was guitar, uh, uh, guitar center, and and they, uh, I was playing, you know, and I was in that tunnel right there, and it sounded real good the acoustics. And he said his name was Ice T. He said he was a rapper. He took the time to talk to me, you know, and I hadn't, I wasn't involved as much in music as I am now, and, and but he took the time, and I give him credit, and I wrote, made a little song for right there, and I sure played a little harmonica, like this, and then he slapped a five-dollar bill on my hand, you know, <laughs> after singing a song, Ice T, he's a man, understand, understand, understand. Ice T, he's a man. Understand, understand, understand. <laughs> Just playing away, and he was real cool. And then I talked to him, a couple, you know. Uh, Foundations. Yeah. Yeah, you guys played together at, found at Concrete at Foundations. And he remembered. Everything. What was that song you did, did at Foundations? Did he remember that for real? Voodoo. Yeah. He was what was the yeah. song? Boom, doo. Voodoo. Was yeah, nice. that was great. I was in the audience, and you never get a chance so, to go on. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, I, I, what he says is controversial, but he, he is a good person, you know. And uh, I don't think he wants people to get hurt, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's obviously a reflection of real experiences in his life, considering where he came from and the fact that he's black in that environment and it's probably something that white America can't readily identify with but if it's if it expresses his reality he does as a musician have an obligation to reflect that the same way that life sex and death reflects the reality of our lives and we think a lot of other people out there as well right um, Stanley did a Christmas song a thousand Santas 
<laughs> that was like the beginning of it, huh? getting stoned. How'd that come about? Well, we were uh, at the Palace Hotel in, uh, right outside of Manhattan in New Jersey on the Weehawken side. And, uh, oh, well, just, you know, one of those things where you just do a little bit of this <laughs> do a little bit of uh, other things, <laughs> and all of a sudden, me and Alex, we went into the bathroom together. <laughs> wow. Well, okay, okay, let's explain that, though. <laughs> and, and, he, and we took the guitar, and with no amplifier, you know how an electric guitar sounds with no Just amplifier? Because uh -huh. you know, there was no amp there. No acoustics, amp. though. No, not acoustic guitar, but a, no not electric a, not guitar. acoustic. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, natural acoustics in this bathroom at the Palace Hotel were just wonderful. So we took the DAT machine and just sang it out right like that. We took, we recorded three of them and put one out of three and that was it, you know. Yeah. And, and it was, we, every time we went through it, it was like each of the versions was significantly different than the other ones because it was all stream of consciousness. He was making up most of the words and I was just like I was feeling what he was doing so I'd cop to it on the guitar. And, and when we started it, he was standing outside of the yeah. bathroom door and I was just jamming on the chords and then oh. he started humming out there and you can hear like the door opening and him walking into the bathroom it was a completely yeah. surreal experience it was great that was kind of like turning a knob up on the reverb unit <laughs> opening the door yeah right <laughs> and again it's it's like it's 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 stripping it down to its most bare essence you know so right now we're out to disprove um, a lot of the things that certain people would have you believe about the band. So if we strip ourselves of the artifice and just the reality of what the band is comes through, um, uh, uh, we think people will have a better shot at understanding us. Great. Well, the, the songs they stand on themselves is great. And we it, wish it's they happening. Get off each other's backs, but on pop. <laughs> oh God. So is that how most of the songs? Are? I mean, you, I saw you, you played guitar tonight. I didn't know you played. I was, I was opening the set. That, that, the song itself, though, there, back to that, that, that song at the uh, Palace Hotel there in New Jersey, uh, Thousand Santas uh, Getting Stoned. There, uh, it, it's actually about you know Christmas time. That that what has this become? You know, we don't realize. You know, that uh, that uh, oh, uh, you know, Santa is and uh, you know Satan and uh, and that. Uh, Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what do you got in there? <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, and what the fuck is going on? <laughs> this is Christmas time. What the fuck is... You know, yeah, everybody all... forgets what the meaning of it is and just turns the, the in. The devil has... The happy birthday, Jesus. The devil. The devil. Got it. The devil. He has lit the, <laughs> lit the candles on the cake. 